if you've never made tiki cocktails before and you want to get into tiki cocktails, then coming up in this video, I've got the five go-to tiki cocktail recipes that I think you should try to get you started. Hello, rum fans, welcome back to the channel. But for those of you that are new around these parts, hello, welcome. My name is Steve the Barman, and right here on this yellow channel, this is purely dedicated to rum education, fun bits of knowledge and cocktails, all to get you started on your rum journey. So if that sounds like fun, make sure you hit that subscribe button, but don't forget, I've got five other YouTube channels, all with their own dedicated kind of niches, all attracting different audiences. They will all be linked in the description below. So look, what is tiki and what's the difference between tropical cocktails and tiki cocktails? I don't think there's a definitive answer. There is no law, there is no rules about this. My way of interpreting tiki versus tropical, I would go down tropical, the more accessible, the sort of fruitier, slightly sweeter, whereas I put, tro uh, put tiki, actually more kind of a blend of rums and actually spices and and diff lots of different flavors lots of different layers going on textures so i would always urge people that are new to cocktails to start off with the kind of tropical cocktails first before you hit the tiki cocktails but once you get acclimatized to the layers the different levels of spices and the different rums and what they bring to the party then i firmly believe that tiki is where it's at so these five cocktails again there's nothing kind of like too technical in here at all. It may be different ingredients, but all these are pretty simple and pretty easy to make. And I promise you, I flip in love every single one of these. Otherwise, I wouldn't have put them in this video. So let's get started. I bet you know what that is, but this one is flipping delicious. Let's go. So the first cocktail is going to need absolutely zero introduction to a lot of regular viewers. But for you new viewers, if you want to get into tiki cocktails, this is the be all and end all, to be honest. It is the Mai Tai. So ingredients for this, look, we could go down various different, we could do a whole 50 video series on rums alone, just purely for the Mai Tai. Pick your favorite rums to get you started, all right? And then go down the rabbit hole of picking different rums. I've done various blind tests. My my sort of recipe at the moment is a blend of the two Worthy Parks, the Worthy Park Select and the Worthy Park 109. And I just think it works exceptionally well. But I'm not going to tell you which rums to use. You do the own experiments and then go down your Mai Tai rabbit hole. Uh, your Orange Liqueur, Pierre Ferrand Dry Orange Liqueur Sale. Uh, your Orgit Syrup. <laughs> your Orgeat Syrup. Uh, Demerara and this is just a two to one sort of uh, cane, uh, un unrefined cane sugar syrup essentially, and some lime juice. So shaking cocktail, 22 and a half mil of your lime juice, seven and a half mil of your Demerara sugar, seven and a half mil of your Orgite syrup, 15 mil, half an ounce of your orange liqueur, and then you want 60 mil of rum. So I'm doing 30 mil of the Worthy Park Select, and 30 mil of the Worthy Park 109. Add a good scoop of crushed ice, then shake and dump into your favorite Mai Tai glass, then crown with more crushed ice, garnish with a lovely couple of sprigs of mint, and then I, yeah, I just use a dried lime wheel. So good. Everyone loves the Mai Tai. It is so good. Once you find your rum combination, and that's the fun, you know, it just opens a whole new well to you. It's just such a well-balanced cocktail when you find the ratios that you love. Honestly, it is the be all and end all of tiki cocktails for the reason. But you can go off on so many different riffs as well. You know, banana Mai Tai swapping in a banana rum, for example. Pineapple Mai Tai swapping in a pineapple rum. There's just, you know, it is just a great solid base and a fantastic cocktail. Now for the second cocktail, I've opted for the Queen's Park Swizzle. I would kind of refer this to a pimped up, grown up mojito. Now that's not to put a down on a mojito. I absolutely love the mojito, but the flavors in this kind of, you know, they're, they're unforgiving if you like. If you're not used to kind of tiki flavors and spices, then this cocktail is gonna be a bit of a culture shock if you are like a real big fan of the mojito. So as, Angostura, the rum, have, as they have sort of coined this cocktail and taken this cocktail as their own, it's only right that we use an Angostura rum. And my favorite of their rums to use in this cocktail is um, the Angostura seven-year-old. I think it's a belting rum for this. But again, look, 
Just get making with your favourite rums and then you can go down the rabbit hole of playing about. No one's going to tell you it should be this rum when you're first starting out. Just have a play, have a try. So we've got a rum, slightly aged. Demerara sugar, as I mentioned in the Mai Tai. Angostura bitters, some lime juice and about 10 to 12 mint leaves. So to make this nice and simple, the 10 to 12 mint leaves, palm your hand, give them a slap and then just put them straight in the base of your glass. Then I'm going for 22 and a half mil, three quarters of an ounce of sugar, 30 mil, one ounce of lime juice, decent amount of crushed ice to get you started. And then take your swizzle stick or a bar spoon if you're gonna use that, place it in and then we're just gonna swizzle. Now we're gonna add 60 ml of our rum of choice. Add a bit more crushed ice. Give it another swizzle. Top it up with even more crushed ice. Then the crowning glory is five to eight dashes of Angostura bitters. And then very simply, just garnish with even more mint. Honestly, that is so good. The rum punches, but without it being too in your face because Angostura is just a lovely rounded, it's a great sipping rum, but a great cocktail rum as well, especially that seven year old. But the Angostura bitters, they kind of just sort of gradually melt through that crushed ice and gradually come through in there. The mint is not overpowering at all. Honestly, it's a fantastic, as I say, grown up mojito, if you want to call it that. It's just really good. Now, next up for your third cocktail, we're going for the Jungle Bird. Now, a lot of people get put off this cocktail simply because of the Campari. It's a very bitter aperitif, if you like. Um, it's not to everyone's palates, and it does make cocktails a little bit bitter. But I promise you, give it a try. Because A, you can adjust the amount of Campari in there. But B, once you get used to it and get the balance right, which happened to me, I really didn't like this cocktail sort of the first half a dozen times or so I made it. But then I did a couple of things actually. I'm actually gonna flash blend this cocktail in a milkshake blender, spindle blender. I used to shake it, but I found the extra dilution from sort of flash blending it really worked a treat for me. But I kind of play about with the ratios a little bit of the Campari and the rum. I really like this rum in this cocktail. So we're going for the Chairman's Reserve Legacy Rum. Original recipe, kind of a dark rum. So, you know, whatever floats your boat. But I would actually, to get you into it, I would go for kind of a, a medium sort of, I don't know, a, a blended kind of younger aged rum to just get started. Maybe something from Barbados, a little bit more forgiving, you know, without too much punching out like a Jamaican rum would do. Um, so just to get you started, but I really like Chairman's Reserve Legacy. We have got the Campari here. Um, we've got some of the Demerara cane sugar syrup again, and then pineapple juice and freshly squeezed lime juice. So first up, 15 ml of your lime juice, and then 15 ml, half an ounce of your Demerara sugar syrup. 45 ml, one and a half ounces of pressed pineapple juice. With the Campari, I'd say start at 15 ml, but I'm actually gonna do 22 and a half ml, because I've got used to this cocktail now. And then I'm going for 45 ml, one and a half ounces of the Chairman's Reserve Leg. Add a decent scoop of crushed ice and then just an open gated pour, double old fashioned glass or slightly large glass. And then to garnish, pineapple wedge and a couple of pineapple fronds. Now, as I say, I think that is absolutely delicious. I've got really into that bitter sweet combination. Now, this isn't sweet. There is a bit of uh, Demerara sugar in there. Of course there is but that's just beautifully balanced. Pineapple and Campari works so well. The rum, I really like the rum in there. Just play about with the rums. I don't really want what I would call as a classifier as a really good dark rum. Like I wouldn't make this with the Worthy 109. I wouldn't make this with the OFTD. I think they've just got a bit too much in, on them for me. So I really do like the Chairman's Legacy in this, but it's a stunning cocktail, really, really good cocktail. Once you once you get used to it, once you get your dilution and your ratios, you Campari, right? Now for the fourth Tiki cocktail, this cocktail deserves way more love than it gets. This is really, really delicious. And this really does sort of play on the spices and the flavors and the depth that goes on in this cocktail. There's a little riff and a little swap, but I'll talk you through it in a second. So. 
uh, orange juice. We've got freshly squeezed orange juice. We've got some lime juice. We've got Angostura bitters. Um, ignore this for two seconds. We've got our pimento dram, our all-spiced dram, which is, you know, pimento berries, quite spicy liqueur. Rum. It does, Rich, what was it? It's a gold virgin islands rum. Again, you know, it's relatively talking, the original recipe is relatively talking about Cruzan and brands like this, but I really do like this bouncy dark rum. Um, I don't know how close it gets to a Cruzan or anything like that. I'm assuming not close, but it is column still with a little bit of pot in there. So oh, I just love it. I just think it works so well in this cocktail. Now, the OG recipe calls for cinnamon syrup. I don't actually have cinnamon syrup here anymore because any time that a cinnamon syrup is called for, I use this, the Monin Winter Spice. Now, this, I, if you haven't got it, just use cinnamon syrup. That's absolutely fine. But this, if you'll see from the close-up on there, it's got the five different things. We've got cinnamon, we've got um, nutmeg, clove, ginger. But the thing that makes it for me is just that hint of chili in there. And for me, any time I get a cinnamon or cinnamon's called for in a recipe now, I do really use this morning winter spice. So again, flash blended cocktail on your spindle blender. So we're starting off with 15 ml of lime juice, 15 ml of freshly squeezed orange juice, seven and a half ml of your cinnamon syrup, or in my case, the winter spice syrup, and seven and a half ml of your pimento dram or all spice liqueur, 60 ml of your rum of choice. Remember it did say gold Virgin Islands rum, but sorry, we love this. And then one dash of Angostura bitters. Good scoop of crushed ice. Then open gated pour into a double old fashioned glass. Or I've got a really small highball here. Brown with a bit more crushed ice. And then to garnish, let's go a bit crazy. I've got a sprig of mint and let's get a dried dragon fruit out to play. Honestly, the layers involved in that, the spice, the pimento, even seven and a half mil, you know, even that for some of you might be too much. You might want to bring that down to five. But for me, with that combination with that winter spice, because that chili does come through in there as well, it is just delicious. I think the bounty is a dark rum, I think is on the kind of the top level that I would go for a dark rum. For instance, I wouldn't go the Worthy one. If you see me using dark and thinking, oh, I might try that with Worthy 109 or Plantation or around Goldstone Dark, I probably wouldn't. They'll probably have too much on them for me. I do think especially with those spices i do think a lighter style from there but i just love the vibe that that bounty dark gives it it's really really good now for your fifth and final recipe i've got a big old smile on my face because we could not do the uh the zombie now this is the og zombie the original uh taken from beach bun berry's remix book and he, i mean beach bun berry for those of you who don't know has done a lot of research into the original recipes and there are various other recipes out there you know all got different juices and passion fruits and god knows what in them but this is the original uh, as far as we can tell so how many ingredients two four six Eight, nine ingredient beast. Now let me talk you through it and now I get rid of stuff. So uh, first off, freshly squeezed lime juice. We'll put that to one side. Here, Don's own mix. So with Don the Beachcomber, that's who invented, created this cocktail. So Don's own mix, which is two parts white grapefruit to one part cinnamon. Now remember, I don't have cinnamon syrup here. I have the winter spice syrup. So mine is actually STB's own mix. If you like, it's uh, two parts white grapefruit juice with one part of the winter spice syrup. So we've got that. Uh, Angostura bitters. We need that. Right. Um, Perno pastel. I've got pastis purely. It's Cornish. I'm, I'm patriotic, but purely because I get it in half bottles and it just works a treat because you never need that much of it. So buying a whole bottle is just going to last you decades because you literally need like a fraction of a teaspoon of this so little half bottle of pastis we've got there uh, and then we can focus on the rest of the core ingredients now um grenadine we want a bit of grenadine you want your falernum jd taylor's velvet falernum and then your rums this is near as damn it i can get to the original kind of base of this so 
The recipe calls for an Asia, I think it's right, a gold, yeah, a gold Puerto Rico rum. So yes, we could go slightly younger. We could go to Don Q uh, gold. I forget what Don Q's base rum is now. Not the Cristal, but the next one up, slightly aged. I go for the Don Q7 because I think it works a treat. Um, then Don Zone, Don Beachcomber calls for an aged Jamaican rum. Uh, so we've got Plantation Zion Mackey here. You could go like Appleton or things like that, whatever, where they select, you know, whatever takes your fancy. And then for us here in the UK, we've really got two options for this. It calls for a 151 Demerara rum. Um, now, this isn't 151, but it is my go to. This is pl uh, Plantation OFTD. I'll flip in Nora. That's delicious, what it stands for. The other alternative, to my knowledge, is the Pusses Select, which is a 151, which again is a Guyanese a Demerara rum. To my knowledge, I don't think we have. Unless I'm being complete. Oh, Goslings. We we might well we we get Goslings one five one. I forgot all about that. Um, any other one five one, but essentially you want a Demerara, so Guyanese El Dorado kind of territory. Um, one five one rum. Now to start off with, I've got always got a spare pipette here, and so we just want six drops of the pastis or perno, whatever you've gone for. 22 and a half mil of freshly squeezed lime juice, and then 15 mil of Don's own mix or STB's own mix in this case. 15 mil, half an ounce of your velvet for learning. 45 mil of your gold Puerto Rican rum. 45 mil of your aged Jamaican rum. 30 mil of your overproof, your 151 Demerara rum. And then a bar spoon, about five mil of grenadine. And then one dash of Angostura bitters. Six ounces of crushed ice. Then after five or six seconds, an open gated pour. And I forgot to mention the couple of agitator cubes as well. And then to garnish, I don't know why, but I've just got some pineapple fronds and a dried passion fruit. Might stick a sprig of mint in there for the photos as well. Now, better go steady with that. Because to my calculations, there's 90 mil of booze in there and not much mixer. But you know it's punchy, but it isn't as strong because of the dilution, because of the ice and all that. It isn't like completely blow your head off taste. It will do because it's so well put together that you can't taste it. But it just shows what you can do. You don't have to mask stuff with loads of juices and stuff like that. I tell you the little bit on the aftertaste is that Don's own mix, that grapefruity kind of, well, for me, and that cinnamon and chili and sort of nutmeg clove vibe goes in there. That is just, it's just flipping delicious. And quite why recipes or zombies are now these days with like passion fruit and pineapple juice and God knows what else in them. When the OG tastes that good, I don't know. Do you get, I know what some of you will be thinking, do you get that sort of perno, that pastis? Yes and no. It'll be a well-trained palate, someone who's used to drinking it, that gets it. It's only six drops in there. And I really don't, you know, it, it's you've got the aroma, you've got the bouquet, but nothing much, not really any more sort of, um, what's the word, aniseedy kind of vibes in there. It's just, honestly, it is delicious. Now, a couple of bits of interaction for you guys. For the newbies that have never made tiki cocktails before, let me know in the comments below which one you want to get stuck into first. For the more experienced ones, did I get the five entry tiki cocktails right? What other tiki cocktail would you put in this five to give the newbies a kind of a, a, decent, a, a decent understanding of tiki and what it's about? I think I've pretty much nailed it, but I'm open to suggestions. Now, while I'm sipping on my Queen's Park Swizzle, if you haven't watched it yet and you want to know my top five tropical cocktails to get you into rum cocktails, then watch that video right there.